strike up the band. In today's episode, I'm sharing with you five things that I wish I knew years and years and years ago. First of all, number one, let things go that you don't have control over. So many times we want to take control over these things. We want to be an advocate for our program. And I encourage you to be an advocate, but you can't control something. So do the things you can control. Ask for the things you know you should ask for. Be persistent in asking for them. I remember the seven years I was at the first school I taught at, there were some things I kept asking for, kept asking for, and they told me no. And then I left because I felt like I couldn't remain there without those things changing. And they incorporated them the year after I left. So I don't know if the new director said the same things and they realized that that was needed or if they just didn't realize I was at the point of actually being ready to to leave over it. Now, some people, sometimes on some of our social media sites where people can share advice, some people are like, leave that job immediately. And we've got to be careful with that. So don't leave just because things aren't going exactly your way, but you do have to decide what is important enough for you to leave. Tip number two, spend lots of time on the fundamentals. In a 50 minute class, I spend at least 20 minutes, often more, just on the fundamentals of scales, breathing, intervals, tonguing, rhythms, all those kind of basic things that we need to do. Now, early in my teaching career, I think I spent probably three to five minutes on those kind of things. And then the the longer I teach, the longer I spend time. Now I have to be careful not to spend the entire class period because I want to keep the, the pace going and keep it interesting for the, for the students. Tip number three, this is somewhat related to number two, focus on a good tone from the start. It's better to spend an extra two weeks just playing the first two or three notes, but getting them to play it with a good solid foundation and with lots of air. Air will get you there. Air will get you there. It's like the gasoline is how I explain it to the kids. It's the gasoline of playing an instrument. And just like a car won't work without gasoline, then an instrument won't work without air. Tip number four, select appropriate literature. Now you may have played some really cool songs in college. You may have played cool songs even in your high school and middle school band, but you have to realize that not every group is the same as the group that you are a part of. So if you were in, just in Colorado Springs here, for example, there are some groups that start in fourth grade and by sixth grade, they're playing some really musical things and their seventh and eighth grade top bands do some absolutely amazing things. And if someone went to a program like that or grew up in a program like that and then went to music college and then taught in a district that's just 15 minutes outside of our town, they might be surprised at the level that those groups outside of town that just have the one band that's like 6th through 12th grade, they're not going to be able to play that same literature. And if you try to do that same level of literature, it might be frustrating for you and for the students. Now, I have found that there's quality music at every level. I have found grade 0.5, grade 1, grade 2 pieces that sound beautiful, have musical elements in them. And so that's something you can look for. It's hard to find them. There's a lot of cool things that are kind of boring. Like sometimes some things have a good, um, a good, I can't even remember the, the name of it, but kind of the same repeating rhythm and ostinato. And, but to me, they're not, they're not musical. They, they sound kind of cool to the kids at first, but some of those are not musical. You can find quality literature at every level. Tip number five, reach out with two positive communications for every negative. If nothing else, this is for your own soul, for your own benefit, but it's going to have a benefit with the students as well. 
So if you have to reach out a lot, right now I'm very fortunate, I'm teaching at a charter school and I have not had a single behavior issue, I have not had to reach out in a negative way at all, but I'm still reaching out one to three times a day to parents to say something positive because I want to keep depositing in that positive banking account so that someday if I have to make a withdrawal, it's ready to go. Hey, if you need some professional development sessions at your school or in your district, I would love to come and share. I am semi-retired. I retired from public school teaching and just teach half-time at this charter school, and I would love to come and present in your district. 719-238-4193 to reach me to find out more or look for the contact info in the show notes. The Music and Podcast, where you get quick and easy tips for how to be a better band.